Well, good morning. Welcome to our webinar, everyone. I'm your facilitator this morning. My name is Bernie Jaroslow, and I'm Witnix's marketing manager. Uh, this webinar is NBC and Florida CE Broker approved, and following the program, you'll receive an email with a link to the, rec the recorded webinar and then instructions on how to obtain your credit. You can ask questions anytime throughout the webinar. You have to type them in the questions box on the right-hand side of your screen. All the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. Today's webinar is Digital to Retain Prosthesis. Demonstrate the use of three-shaped dental designer software to design screw-retained implant crowns with gingival architecture. It will take a detailed look at the exceptional tools that three-shape provides its users uh, to simplify the task of fabricating these very popular prostheses. The webinar will be presented this morning by Evan Kemper, recognized graduate, CDT, and TE, who is a senior technical specialist at WebMix. As a certified uh, three-shape and roll-in trainer, he develops and conducts CAD CAM equipment and software training. He develops uh, CAD CAM products for WITMIX and provides technical support and assistance to our digital customers. Evan is a graduate of Lexington, Kentucky's Bluegrass Community and Technical College in Dental Laboratory Technology, and he received his bachelor's degree in computer science from Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky. So Evan, if you're ready, we may start. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so first, what I'd like to do is we'll go through a few slides on just the uh, materials and some of the um, different parts you'll need for making a screw retained uh, prosthesis. Um, once we go through that, then we'll actually look at a couple of live demos of how to do a single uh, screw retained crown with gingiva in three shape. So. Uh, typically, when you're talking about um, screw retain prosthesis, you are looking at these all on four, all on six um, pre tau bridges. Um, but you can still do single units um, screw retain. And then once you know how to do a single unit, you can extrapolate that across um, a full arch bridge. Um, so, really, there's kind of two different workflows where you might be doing these. And uh, on this slide, you can kind of see what you would need for each scenario. Um, the first would be a completely digital workflow. Um, now, typically, this is only recommended for um, short implant bridges or single units just because most intraoral scanners still aren't quite accurate enough across an entire arch, um, especially a fully edentulous arch, to give you a quality scan that, uh, for a single implant bridge. Um, but if you're going to do them with the complete digital workflow, um, surgical guides are optional, but kind of recommended, um, which would mean that you've planned the surgery or the doctors planned the surgery and that helps with keeping implants parallel. Um, you would also need intraoral scan bodies um, if a guide wasn't used or if the surgical guide software can't export the implant position from the planning. Uh, you of course need some kind of dental CAD system. We'll be using three shape today. Um, a 3D model printing service is recommended. Um, single units you might be able to get away with um, going model list, but generally you're going to want to check that um, restoration on a model. You'll need printed model implant analogs, which are a little different than your traditional analogs. Um, you need the titanium implant interface. You'll need your ZR, stains, glaze, porcelain. Um, a diagnostic or a pre-op model will help you um, as far as placing that restoration and then a bite record if you were going to do a full upper or lower. Um, and then the more common workflow right now, uh, just because um, the intraoral scanner uh, business is not as common as your analog impressions, um, this will be probably where you would start. So again, surgical guide, that's kind of optional, um, but recommended. Um, you'd need the, op the doctor would need an open or closed tray impression system for picking up the impression copings. Um, you would need your traditional lab analogs, soft tissue, gypsum, your CAD system. You'll still need scan bodies to pick up the implant location. Um, and most companies now, their intraoral and lab analogs are the same um, to eliminate some of that confusion that there was in the earlier days. Um, you'll still need that titanium implant interface, your ZR stains, a diagnostic is recommended, not required, and then a bite record. Um, so if, 
anybody's not familiar with what a scan body is, um, if you, it's kind of just an indexed post that will screw into the implant and there, you'll get a different one of these for each implant platform and diameter. Um, so what they do is they allow the scanner to essentially scan that post in the implant and then you align a CAD version of that upper index portion right here. And that gives the software the um, depth and inclination of the implant. Um, one thing that's important to note about scan bodies is that different manufacturers will have different indexing methods. Um, so you need to use the get the digital library of the scan bodies um, for the physical ones you're going to use or the ones the doctor's scanning. Um, the caveat to that is that 3Shape has just released their titanium scan bodies that are um, universal. So you can essentially um, you use 3Shape scan bodies, scan, and then you can send to any manufacturer that supports 3Shape scan bodies. Um, before that, you would have to send to the manufacturer um, who made the, th the uh, scan body library. Um, again, implant planning software is recommended, you know, if it's just a single unit or um, something like that, you probably don't need to plan it. But if you're doing a full arch, um, this would be a good idea to uh, use implant planning software and then a surgical guide. And of course, if you are going to use a surgical guide, um, then you can either make a uh, analog guide or if you want it to really be accurate, do a digital one from a planning software. Um, as far as this goes, you plan it, the doctor approves it, um, they approved a surgical guide. You either 3D print it or mill it, but most of them are going to be 3D printed. And then you buy titanium sleeve inserts that will go in there and guide. Um, the drill during surgery. Uh, of course, if you're going to do um, intraoral scans of implants, then the doctor would need an intraoral scanner. Most of the ones on the market will support uh, doing uh, implants uh, since they're purely just acquisition devices. Um, this slide's just a little bit about the intraoral workflow, but essentially the doctor is going to scan the mouth with the um, in, uh, scan body in it. They'll send the scan. You have to have the digital library for the scan bodies they've used, and then you will align that virtual version of the scan body to the one that was picked up in the intraoral scanner. That gives it the implant position, and from there you can design an accurate custom abutment, screw retain crown, um, pretty much anything you're going to put on an implant. Um, if you're going to check the fit of your um, implants, screw retain crowns, or short span um, screw retain bridges, you're going to want a model. Um, these models can be milled or printed. Um, it's more common that they're printed. And then if you're going to do that, you also would need that um, 3D printed model analog. And I think I've got a slide in here I can show you of that. The next thing you're going to need um, is the tie base. Um, traditionally, the um, screw retain crowns and bridges are using a small uh, pre-manufactured titanium base and uh, the CAD software will essentially cut out a negative index of whatever interface you're using and then you will cement the zirconia to this titanium. Um, there's a couple different types of these tie bases. Um, some are indexed, some are not like this. This is a conical connection to help um, get around issues of non-parallel implants um, on a bridge. Um, if you're doing singles, you can use the index version. Um, and some of them will also have different heights. Traditionally, they're about three millimeters tall. And then uh, some manufacturers offer six millimeters if you need a little more strength. So here, when I was talking about different um, libraries for different scan bodies and manufacturers. Here you can see two third party companies that both make a tie base for Nobel's replace RP platform. And the indexing part that would go into the implant is the same, but the top cap that indexes to your zirconia design is different. That's why it's important that if the doctor uses an NT trading uh, scan body in their intraoral scanner, you use one on your model. 
then you're buying the tie base from NT Trading because obviously if you bought the titanium base from Glidewell, it's not going to fit in a design um, that uses an NT Trading interface. So now we'll look at an act, not a, a bridge, but a single unit. So in three shape, the one thing I'm not going to show you is scanning, um, but the scanning is pretty straightforward. You, know, you just screw in the uh, scan body when it asks you and it'll pick up the position. As far as setting up the order in three shape, um, you'll pick your tooth and then under abutment, if you click screw tank crown, this will be a full contour zirconia screw retained crown on a tie base. Um, anatomical abutment will let you do a full contour screw retained crown, but then you can also cut back the facial if you want to layer uh, ceramic. Uh, and then it also lets you make a more natural custom abutment if that's what you're going for. And then uh, customized abutment is more of your standard um, prepped looking abutment. Uh, wax up abutment, not commonly used anymore. That allows you to scan in a abutment that you've waxed up, like if you did UCLA style wax up, uh, but you still need a scan body for this. Um, so once you pick what you're going to do, so if I'm doing, say, screw retain crown, underneath uh, system, there will be a list of any of the uh, implant systems that you've imported a three shape library for. And so the ones I have here um, are from NT Trading. And essentially, depending on where you get it from, they'll have different names for their different kits. Um, with NT Trading, this one piece replace select is for solid titanium abutments, um, not tie bases. And then this replace NT 3D dim, that is their actual tie base kit. And so once I select the system, if I select the kit, then I have my different options for diameter and different tie bases. Um, and with any manufacturer, these should be labeled to help you identify what part you need to buy. Um, with NT Trading, the 820 is the uh, replace RP platform. And then the TIB is their index tie base. And then the two connect is that conical connection I showed you in that slide. Um, so for a single, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the um, actually, let's say 10 tie base. And then, of course, you need to pick the material that you're wanting to manufacture this out of. So let's do Veracore HT, shade. Um, if you're doing multiple abutments, um, you have the option to group them. So, you know, this is a little more helpful when you're just doing a custom abutment that you're later going to put a crown over. But if you are a bridge, if you want the top caps for the um, abutments to be parallel, then you just make sure you group them. Next, if I'm going to put tissue on this design, then I need to come down to gingiva and just click gingiva. The first option is for doing denture gingiva, so you wouldn't be using that in this scenario. And the next two options allow me to add tissue to my zirconia design. Uh, the first one will leave the tissue uh, full contour to whatever you design. And the second one, anatomical gingiva, will allow you to specify a cutback amount if you wanted to cut it back and then layer pink porcelain, which will give you a better look. Um, but I'm just going to leave it full contour. Go to Veracore HT. And pick a shade. Um, and then lastly, if you are doing this on a uh, digital impression, which this is from a trio scan, um, then you can select a put a model on it. Uh, um, and then depending on where you're going to have this printed and what printer it's on, and also what um, implant manufacturing kit you're using. Some of them don't have a, a printed bottle analog, so it has to print your design as a die. Um, but NT Trading does have printed model analogs. So I'll just go to an unsectioned model and pick our uh, print material. 
So that's really all you have to do to set it up. If you were doing a bridge, then you would pick, you know, a tooth that's close to each one of your um, implant locations, set them up just like I have here as screw retain crowns with gingiva and then anything in between it, you select as a ponic. So now we can go into the design. Making a little tweak to this case real quick. So because this is an intraoral scan, um, it's going to ask me to go ahead and trim it, um, but it's already been trimmed. So um, if you were going to trim anything here, you just, you know, draw your new border and it'll trim stuff off. Next, you need to set the occlusal alignment. Now, if you're getting, if you're using three shape and you're getting scans from a trios, this should already be set up pretty well if it was scanned properly. Um, if you're getting third party intraoral scans, um, especially in raw STL format, then uh, you may have to rotate this. And the reason you want, you essentially you want to try and line this up now so it follows the occlusal plane. Um, this is going to, if you make a printed model, this is going to determine the uh, how the model base is oriented to the scan. And if this is off by a lot, you're gonna end up with a really um, bad looking model, uh, as well as one that may take a long time to print. Um, now I've got the ability to sculpt on the scan if I wanna change the contour of anything. If I wanna sculpt tissue, then you can actually come in and sculpt tissue, which you can probably see better if I turn the color off. Now, of course, you don't, don't want to change anything that um, may negatively influence your design. Um, you know, but for this, I'm going to make a little bit more room for that tissue architecture. And I can just go next. So. This scan actually came out of uh, Three Shapes Implant Studio where the planning was done for this implant. And then this scan automatically has the implant location in it. So I don't have to use a scan body to pick up the location. Um, so this is what, if I had this um, impression or stone model poured up and I had an analog in it and scanned it using a lab scanner, then this is, with NT trading, this is what their um, scan body looks like. So I would have screwed that in, 
scanned and now it's given me that location of the implant. Um, on the direction stage, all you're doing is specifying the insertion direction, which is pretty much determined by the position of the analog. So you don't really have to do anything here. Just click next. Now you're, if you're doing a screw retained crown or a anatomical abutment, then you'll have an anatomy pre-design stage. And what we're doing here is doing a basic design of our anatomy. Um, we have all the tools that we would normally have if you're familiar with three shape um, for sculpting full contour crowns. You also have your smile library option where you can come in and change which tooth you want to use simply by clicking on it. Um, we could also mirror uh, the tooth from the other side, but we're going to just pick a library tooth for this. So yeah, here you don't have to get this, um, you know, all the way to like a finished design because you do have another stage for sculpting this tissue, but gener or uh, tooth. But generally, get it close to what you want. Um, if you're protruding through the tissue a lot, um, then we're going to want to change that because that will go through the tissue architecture that we put on here. So even if it looks a little weird with the, this gap in here, we're going to fill that with the tissue contour. Um, you don't have to worry about cutting your contacts yet. Again, we can do that in the second design stage. So before I go on to the next part, I'm just going to hide the design and the scan and show you some of these library parts. So here is the tie base, uh, which has an index uh, and where it would be positioned in regards to the analog. If I turn on this slider right here, this green slider, that's showing me what the internal contour of that ZR will be. So that's the surface it's actually going to cut. Um, to allow for cement space for the zirconia unit. Um, if we do a 2D cross section really quick, we can see, you guys zoom in pretty close. Right here, this is the outer wall of the tie base. This blue is what's going to be the internal of our uh, zirconia crown. Once we get, uh, once we actually apply that to the crown, we'll be able to measure it. But essentially this gap is determined by the manufacturer of that tie base and you can't change it. So if you're feeling like you, the fit's too tight, then you may want to investigate a different manufacturer's library. Or if you find that the little, like the indexing nub that NT Trading uses isn't enough anti-rotational indexing, then you might want to look at a different manufacturer's system. So now we can go ahead and go next since we have our pre-design done. So now um, what we're doing is designing the emergence profile of the screw retained crown. And so what we want to do in this, if you've done any kind of uh, abutment work in three shape, this will be familiar to you. If you haven't really all you're going to be doing is clicking. And then on each one of these orange balls, when you click on it, you get, a grid. The grid, each little square is one millimeter. So this is to give you an idea of depth or how much you might be impinging on tissue. 
Um, and then when you each time you click on one of these, you get a different black line, which is the profile of the tissue um, following like a 2D plane through that point. And you also get a 2D profile you can see of the tooth. That's the gray. And if you want, you can totally hide your uh, working arch scan while you do this. And so what we're going to do is just match either match the profile to follow our tissue um, or in this case, since I'm going to be filling some of this space with um, the tissue contour, I can kind of just bring it up to meet my crown. There are a couple of options to automatically position this tissue. Um, the first one over here under settings on the left is snap to gingiva. So if I hit that button, it's going to try and snap that line to the closest tissue point uh, that it can snap to. Um, and also on a model that has been poured with an impression coping, um, you will be able to scan the contour of the tissue down to that analog where, and because this scan came out of implant planning software and the implants not placed, there is no tissue contour. So instead of seeing a line that slopes and follows a normal tissue contour, you would see it slope down to follow the profile of the healing cap um, or however it was scanned. Um, the next option you have is snap to anatomy and that's going to try and snap to the closest point on that crown. Um, so generally I'll try like snap to anatomy and see what it gives me. And if it looks like it's going to match all right and not be in the way, then I'll go with that. Um, if you want to change the, um, slope of this emergence profile, you can either drag these green points. So in or out will change that profile, but you can also, while you're hovering over one of these orange points, just scroll your mouse wheel and change that emergence as well. Um, a couple options under advanced over here, you have the grid size, which is one millimeter. So if you do want to change your grid size, you can just by adjusting this value. Vertical offset, what that does is if you, so essentially when I adjust this emergence profile, it adjusts all the way down to the tie base. If I increase this vertical offset, it protects the first however many millimeters I specify here. So let's say half a millimeter. So now when I adjust it, that first half a millimeter stays a complete um, vertical cylinder that's the size of the platform. So we go next. Um, periodically, when you're doing abutments in 3Shape, you'll get a pop-up like this. Uh, the abutment design is now validated to work with the manufacturer. Further changes to the design may invalidate this check. So during each stage, it's going to check your design um, based on settings in the control panel that the manufacturer set up, um, like minimum uh, thickness from the tie base, uh, minimum or maximum margin height or distance from the implant on the margin. Uh, and then also, if you are doing a solid titanium abutment, it's going to be that's milled out of a blank. It'll be checking to make sure your design is within a blank. And if you violate any of the manufacturer settings, then it will not let you uh, move on with that abutment or at the very end, it's not gonna save it and let you output it. Um, if you ever wanna check your validation, uh, then it's this button right here. It looks like a triangle with an exclamation point. So you just click that and hit update. And I got a little red exclamation point and right now it's saying that my minimum thickness uh, violates the material thickness, which we'll be fixing later. So um, now we're in our second anatomy design stage. So this is where we're going to finalize this uh, screw retain crown. Uh, again, you have the same options as you had before uh, in any full contour uh, design and three shape. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the different tools just because if you've used three shape, um, you'll be familiar with them, but real quick for anybody who hasn't used three shape or doesn't have CAD cam. Uh, the first tool over here under single tooth tools 
uh, lets you do large scale transformations uh, to the crown. So the green balls scale, red rotates, and the yellow will kind of expand the occlusal table. Uh, so that's for large transformations. Uh, the next one is the morphing tool. And this one actually lets you change localized areas of the crown while maintaining the uh, library anatomy. You also have these colored points that allow you to lock on the key features of the anatomy, as well as if I hold shift, like when I'm on these lingual cusps, then it grabs both of them. And when I make a change, it, it adjusts both. Uh, the next one over is the wax knife. And this essentially would be the closest tool to adding or removing uh, wax in an analog method. So the plus allows me to sculpt and add material. And the minus will remove if you don't have a threshold tool on. So now I can remove. And then the green smooths. So generally, once I have my uh, design the way I want it, I'm only using the wax knife to carve in anatomy or once we put the tissue on smoothing up the junction between them. Um, so now I can go ahead and connect this to the margin, which will essentially be the um, that interface. Now you will see it just did something where it auto sculpted this area. So I am going to have to re sculpt um, this unit. So I'll go ahead and get the morphing tool. And we're going to start bringing this back out. And I'm going to have to check on sculpt on protected surfaces so that I can adjust that contour. Because we want the tooth to look natural. Where if we had filled that area in with tissue now, it wouldn't look good. So morph that back out. Do a little bit on the lingual. And we'll smooth up where it made that adjustment. That's where we kind of see that line on the buckle. And we'll go ahead and cut our contacts under Smart Tools. Um, with zirconia, usually you're going to be cutting your contacts out of contact a little bit because you'll be staying in glazing. Um, and that's just a, you know, figuring out how much that is is going to take a couple of uh, trial runs. But usually it's going to be the, in the like 20 to 50 micron range, but it'll depend on the glaze you're using um, and then also the technique for applying it. So after we've cut it, I'm going to fix it around that contour just a little bit around that contact just smooth out so we don't have a dimple. All right, so now um, we're done with the crown design and we will be moving on to adding the tissue. Um, and so this will just be showing tissue on one unit, but when you do it on multiple units, you don't have like a tissue step for each crown. It's a tissue step for the entire restoration. And the same steps will apply no matter how many units you have. So when we get in, we'll be on the gingival anatomy. Under outlines, you've got three different buttons and a drop down for material settings. So the first button lets us draw the outline for our artificial tissue. The second one allows you to put a window 
Um, essentially, you put a window around each of your implants so that it doesn't bridge the tissue across the implant. It kind of protects it and makes sure that it leaves a hole there. Um, and then the third one is just relief zone. If you want to add relief wax, um, for instance, if they had um, some deep tissue fissures or something, you didn't want it building the uh, anatomy down in there, then you can add relief wax. Um, the base thickness is going to be how thick it tries to make this tissue um, when it applies it. Uh, relief would be how thick the relief wax is going to be if you put relief in there. Um, and then implant protection distance is how far from this circle outwards does it protect that implant. So we'll just go ahead and click on draw artificial gingiva. And then we're going to come in and start drawing our outline. Just by single left clicking, and then finish by clicking the first point. And now that I've finished the circle, I can drag and adjust this. Um, one important thing to note is when you're doing this border, um, especially if you're doing it where they have existing teeth, uh, you've got to be aware that you can't pull this, you know, up close to that adjacent tooth because you're going to create a draw issue there. Now on a full arch restoration, then it doesn't matter because, you know, they're fully edentulous. So I just want to make sure I'm not into the undercut of that tooth. You do want to make sure that you have this border the way you want it, um, just because you can't change it after this step. Um, but you can back up uh, and get back to it, but you know that adds more time with recalculating and stuff like that. So I like that. So we'll go ahead and now we have to draw our window. So I'm going to click that. And you have to put one of these around every implant that you have, but I've just got the one. So again, single left clicking. Finish by clicking the first point and then just make sure you got a little bit of space around that implant. Uh, also, these lines can't be super close together uh, or it won't let you move forward. Um, so like if for whatever reason, the border I drew and the window I drew were really close like that, it's not going to allow it. Um, so generally what you have to do is you can't really adjust the window because you'll make those as small as you can, but you'll have to bring the border out further and then uh, finish it by hand. So now that I have those two lines, I'm not going to add any relief. I'll just click preview so you can see what it's going to do. So there it's created its 1.2 millimeter thick tissue. So now I can go next and I'll have a sculpt stage. Bring my crown in a little bit where I can start sculpting this tissue. You have the same tools that you have when you're sculpting a crown. Um, it's going to accept for the transform tool. So it's going to start out on the morph tool and you can just kind of morph this tissue, get it generally shaped the way you want. You don't have to be super concerned with the contour inside the crown because it's going to make them into the same unit. But what we want to do is work on this contour outside the crown. So I'm just going to morph this down. We'll go ahead and smooth it out a little bit before we do any more contouring.
you can come and add and add, subtract, smooth, just the way you would um, if it was just a crown. Now, if you're going to cut this back, you don't need to spend as much time, uh, obviously, on sculpting this um, because the software is just going to cut it back however much you tell it, and then you'll put on porcelain afterwards. So now if we're happy with our tissue, and you can see if I hide the scan, it's actually cut that tissue right in line with the tissue that's on the model. Now, like I, how I sculpted it before, if you have a stone model and you know you want to make some changes to the tissue, then you need to make the changes to the um, stone model before you scan it. Um, but if it's in, uh, an impression scan or intraoral impression scan, you can sculpt the raw scan. I'll go next. So now I'm in the finalized stage. The finalized stage is put the crown and the tissue together. And I have one final sculpt and uh, um, morphing stage. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that if you're sculpting around the cervical third of the tooth, be careful that you don't go over the junction of your tissue because it's going to wipe out any of that crisp detail line you've got there. Um, so generally, I don't do much unless I notice, oh, uh, I don't like a cusp here or something, make a little tweak to it. But generally, you want to have most of your design done before you get to this stage. And we'll just go next. And now we're on assembly. Um, with the screw retained crowns, there's not a whole lot that you have to do on the assembly stage. All it's going to do is ask you if you want to use a screw hole, which you're going to want to use. Um, so you just check that box. That'll put the screw hole through to match the tie base. Um, vertical screw offset has no effect on tie bases, um, but what it does is if you were doing like a full contour, or sorry, a uh, solid titanium custom abutment, it will actually, whatever value you put in here will, will vertically offset the engagement lip for the screw. Um, extra drill hole radius, that's just going to increase the diameter of that screw hole. So you can see that gave me a little extra room there. And then the whole fillet, all that does is um, rolls the edge of your screw hole. And it would look like that might not work in this version um, but you would just get a softer edge here uh, one thing before we get out of the design um, that i didn't mention in the slides is that if you're going to be milling these zirconia uh, top pieces in-house then you need to have a five axis mill um, you can't do them on a four axis unless you want to sit there and spend hours cleaning up this uh, crown and tissue junction and the reason you need five axis is when this unit goes in a puck, um, you know, a traditional crown does not have this tissue. So anything that the tool can't reach from the occlusal side, it can reach from the uh, gingival side. But when you add this tissue to it and a screw hole, um, the mill has to be able to analyze uh, essentially the insertion direction from both sides and find this undercut and remove this material. Otherwise, like on a four axis mill, this whole undercut here is going to be filled with zirconia and you'd be hand carving it. So essentially the whole cervical third of this restoration. Um, but with a five axis mill, it can actually tilt that tool or tilt the puck and then the tool can come in from both sides and finish out most of this material. Um, as well as drill a hole. Um, and if you're going to be doing the full arch uh, kind of pray tow bridges. It's not uncommon with the conical connections to use angled screw holes if the implant platform supports it. Um, and if you have angled screw holes, you will also need a five axis mill if you're going to mill them in house. So then we can just go next. It's going to finalize the design.
And as long as you get your green check here, that means that it's saved the design. Um, so real quick, I did have this set up to do a digital model. Um, so again, you probably wouldn't be doing this on a full arch scan um, at this time because of the limitations of intraoral scanners. Um, but in the future, uh, there will probably be intraoral scanners that can handle a full arch accurate enough to do these kind of uh, full arch implant restoration. Um, and then you would need to know how to do this. Um, so essentially, we have the same steps that we had earlier in the dental designer, trim preparation, set occlusal plane, add, remove material. If we already did that in the design software, we don't need to do it now. So I can just click next. And so you can see here, it's pulled in my restoration. Um, I'm just going to hide that real quick. And then you can see NT Trading does make printed model analogs. So if you have a company that does make the analogs, what it's going to import here is a kind of a shell profile of what the channel needs to look like for that analog. And so NT Trading uses a two piece uh, indexed uh, screw together. Uh, so it, all, it has a nut that screws from the bottom side analog. And, and they're, so they're actually reusable if you want to reuse them. Um, when the, it's printed out, it's going to have this channel in it. You place your two piece analog in, screw it together, and then you've got your uh, working model for the lab. Um, so there's not really anything I do here as far as sectioning the scan. You're not going to adjust the insertion direction. So I'll just hit OK. Um, your implant models will, especially if they're going to have analogs in them, will be taller than what you're used to because uh, it has to accommodate the full height of that analog. And so here I can add an articulator if I want, but I don't have an opposing arch, so I'm going to say none. I can give it a label. I can move my label around. And then under further behavior, you have subtract design from digital jaw model. Uh, if you're not going to be printing a soft tissue piece for this, then you do need to do this uh, subtract design from digital jaw model. Otherwise, if your design impinges on any tissue, uh, then it's not going to see. And in this case, um, because it's a pre-op scan, there is no healing cap contour to the implant. So it's going to cut just a straight cylinder uh, up if I don't have this checked. And then I'd sit be sitting there grinding for a while to get my restoration fit. So I'm going to just say OK and allow it to subtract my design from the model. So you can see it added my label. It's added that channel and then subtracted my design from the model. Now, if I do want to do soft tissue, I just need to click the soft tissue right here. It's going to automatically go ahead and section out a piece. But if I want to adjust what it's sectioning, I'll just click there. And then I just rotate these planes or drag them to encompass the area that I want it to section out for soft tissue. And you can have multiple ones of these, as you can see in the picture over here on the left. And then this bottom one allows me to adjust the depth. Uh, there's two options here um, that you may want to use. The first one, protect analog. If I turn that on, and then the thickness is going to be how thick it makes this protection wall. Essentially, if I don't have that on, it's going to cut this exactly where these lines are, including through this index portion. So if I had this bottom one way down here for a thick tissue moulage, that's actually going to be cutting through the index portion and all like the wall that supports that analog. So you may get rocking with your analog. But if I turn on protect analog, then it's actually going to build a wall through here that will allow it that analog to still be fully encompassed by the rigid model resin and then the tissue will go over it. And then the add fixture, what that does, well, I'll have to show you in the next stage is if I don't have that on the bottom of this uh, tissue is just completely flat. 
Uh, but if I turn the fixture on, it'll add a little nub that helps you index and make sure that you've got the tissue back in the right spot. So now if we look at the tissue piece, there's that little fixture that it adds. And then if we look at the model, you can see it's added this cylinder cylinder to protect that analog and give it its full support. And then there's the two together. Now you do have to if, have a printer that can print soft materials. Um, so uh, we, our Sega printer can do it with uh, next dense gingiva material, um, or you're gonna have to outsource it to somewhere that can print them, uh, soft tissue. Or you just print the whole model uh, hard, and as long as you've subtracted your design from the model, then it'll seat fine. So that's the final model. I'll just close. And then to get your STLs, you just select your case, hit F7 on the keyboard, and then shift. F4 will take you to your output directory. So you'll get your zirconia. And looking at the different software. So you'll get your zirconia. And you can see it has the indexed portion cut into it. You've got your tissue emergence profile of that implant and then your crown with the screw hole all the way through. So you can mill that in house. Uh, next we have the tissue piece, which is our separate soft tissue uh, for the model. And then you have your model. And like I was saying before, these are usually done with the tie base, but there's no reason that you can't, if you feel like you need more support in metal, um, there's no reason that you can't do a restoration like this using a um, custom titanium abutment. Um, so really one of the advantages of these screw retain ones is they're retrievable. So if something fails, you don't have to cut it off. Um, you can just unscrew it and remove it and then of course in the case of the full arch bridges they have to be removed and cleaned so this allows that re easy retrievability um, but you can do the same thing with a custom abutment and a zirconia crown um, and all you do in the order form is instead of s selecting screw retain crown and then picking a tie base you just pick your full titanium implant custom abutment and then just put a regular crown over it go through your design designing the implant and then you design the crown over top of the implant so you're kind of thinking of this custom titanium abutment as a custom tie base uh, which will, can give you more support uh, more resistance to like cantilevers if the implant isn't uh, positioned that well um, and then at the end of the design uh, where we had that option to check to add a screw hole. Uh, in the case of having an abutment and a crown, there will be a checkbox that says um, screw hole through all units and it'll actually punch a screw hole through the crown as well. And then you get the same retrievability as these tie base um, restorations, but you have the full metal support of a custom titanium abutment. And so that um, kind of brings me to the end of the presentation. All right, thank you very much, Evan. I appreciate it a lot, and um, I hope all of you do as well. Um, are there any questions? Uh, we, as a reminder, there's a, a place in the in the right side uh, screen where you're able to submit questions, and I believe well, there's some nice com compliments. Uh, will there be a link, a replay of today's topic webinar? The next all of our webinars are recorded and they're all available on uh, on witness.com uh, it takes us a few days to get it up there to in fact uh, be able to to uh to get that 
Uh, as a reminder for those of you who are CDTs, uh, you're going to be emailed uh, something which will explain exactly how to, um, it'll give you instructions as to how to obtain your CE credit. Uh, and then if you have any questions in general about the webinar, you can email the, our technical team at digitaltechnicalsupport at whitmix.com, and I'm sure they'll be very happy to, to help you. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, nice compliments. We thank you very much. Uh, do you offer training other than webinars? Yes, in fact, we do have uh, training sessions here inside uh, Whitmix and and outside as well. Uh, and again, I would use that same digital tech support at Whitmix.com to find out if there are any programs in your area or uh, if if you would like to come into uh, to Whitmix, we're very happy to accommodate you as well. Uh, let me see, the questions are coming in. Let me see the next one. What is the turnaround time in building a crown with this software? Uh, so the turnaround time for building a crown in three shape um, or like this kind of restoration. Uh, typically, uh, I think a lot of labs, if the um, dentist is local, you're looking at around four days. Um, you can do quicker, um, but that's going to depend a lot on how you have your digital setup done. Um, because once you're familiar with 3Shape and you're used to the tools and all that, your uh, single unit crowns you can pump out in under 10 minutes uh, if you've got a decent designer. Um, then with because it's zirconia, it's going to have to be milled. So if you're outsourcing your milling, that's going to add more time to it. Um, but if you're doing it um, in-house, uh, you can have, depending on if you want to batch mill or do everything at night or as they come in, a, a single unit um, will be about 20 minutes if it's a uh, just a regular crown on a prep. An implant unit like this would take uh, probably about a half an hour um, with the undercutting. And then after that, it's going to have to go in an overnight centering cycle uh, and you do your stain and glaze. So generally, you're looking at, you know, three to four days, um, at least overnight. If you're, you know, if the dentist is local and you have deliver delivery, then, um, you know, you can scan, design, mill, get it in the centering furnace that night, have it ready to go the next day. Um, but it'll kind of, that a lot of that depends on if you're outsourcing any part of it, or if you have, um, how you've set up your kind of workflow internally um, and how streamlined that is. Okay, Evan, we have another question. What brand of printer prints soft tissue? Um, well, the Asiga um, DLP printers that we have will print it. Um, now, we don't make our own soft tissue material, uh, but it, it's an open material printer. So it can use any DLP print material that prints at 385 uh, nanometer. So uh, Nextent makes one, um, which they make materials for DLP printers. Um, I'm trying to think if any of the other big open material companies have soft tissue. I don't think they do. Um, the object printers can print in soft material, but they're quite a bit more expensive than some of these desktop DLP printers. Um, and essentially, any of those desktop DLP, DLP printers or SLA printers um, are capable of doing it um, as long as they the material exists for them. And one of the big issues with a lot of these desktop DLP printers is that they are closed material. So you can only use the material that the manufacturers have put into the software. So if they don't offer a soft tissue, then that printer, even though the mechanics and the uh, curing system are capable of doing it, the software's got you locked out of it. Um, so that's one of the reasons we really like the Asiga printers is because that you essentially can print any material uh, that can be cured in a DLP uh, printer. All right, another question, Evan. Why do you say that we can 
who own these three unit printed bridges in this way? Can you explain more? And can we mill Kai base in the house? Um, so the first part of the question, why it's only recommended for three unit bridges, this is just a recommendation from the intraoral scanning companies. And the main reason is that when, like, if you're doing a stone model and a typical impression, then you can do full arch. Um, but the issue with intraoral scanners is that due to the, the view size of that wand, it can't pick up a lot of the tissue or a lot of, um, the actual scan at one time and it's having to stitch all that together and the stitching algorithms just aren't good enough to especially on a surface like soft tissue which doesn't have a lot of different contour for it to be able to accurately stitch together a roundhouse edentulous arch um, accurately enough for a implant bridge uh, if you have teeth there though because of all the different embrasures and contours it can track across that surface um, but soft tissue just doesn't have enough um, landmarks uh, to be accurate enough now i know with talking from three shape you know it's in the works that they're trying to optimize or figure out a scanning strategy how you move the wand to make it where you can capture a fully edentulous arch that only has say four implants on it um, but right now it's just not there. And then the second was, can you mill the uh, tie bases in-house? Um, now, if that's in reference to, can I mill a tie base out of a titanium puck? Um, I would believe the answer to that would be no, because that's an FDA regulated part. And unless you have FDA clearance to be doing it or the system that you're using has the clearance to be doing it, then you'd be in violation of uh, FDA. Um, but as far as the zirconia, um, as long as it's full, con I know there was like a couple years ago that uh, the FDA started talking about how you can't be milling tie bases or these kind of restorations in house. And I believe where that ended up is that if it's full contour zirconia on it, it's okay. But if you were milling a custom abutment using the tie base method, that then was going to have something else on top of it, then you had to be FDA cleared to do that. Uh, Evan, next question was, uh, you do print the soft tissue separately, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. So the way it's set up is that you would have two different files. You print your model out of your model material. Um, in the case of our printer, then you switch the print tray, clean your build head, put in the soft tissue material, print your soft tissue. Now there, uh, I believe it's Object has a printer out there that can print hard and soft at the same time, uh, but that actually wouldn't even help you that much in this scenario because it's two different files. Um, so generally, yes, you would be printing these in two separate prints um, and maybe to make it more time effective, especially if you only have one printer, uh, you'd batch together a set of implant models and then batch together a set of soft tissue inserts so that you're not having to switch back and forth for each single print. Okay. The next question is, um, if you don't have implant studio, can you still make a screw retained crown? Yes. Yeah. You, uh, implant studio is purely just planning and surgical guide fabrication, which all of that is optional to this. And I mean, even now in today's digital world, there's still a lot of implants that are placed analog and so really, let me just go back to this, uh, this analog digital workflow. So the typical way that you get in a, um, a impression that'll have a impression coping for the uh, implant, uh, that'll be in there. You put your lab analog on that impression coping, pull your model, then you just need to have the lab scan body that screws in um, to that interface on that uh, um, analog and then that will transfer in the position so yeah the only reason normally i would have had that same scan that has the analog in my presentation but because it came directly out of the planning software that wasn't necessary it just automatically put the um, interface in the position of the planned implant 
now if the planning had changed, then this obviously wouldn't fit. Uh, but the whole idea is that you can have these things ready to go uh, pre-surgery with, with the planning and guides. Uh, but you can definitely do it without. All right. There are two last questions, and I can answer those. Uh, do you offer YouTube videos of Form Lab? Uh, well, no, we don't because Form Labs is a is a competitive uh, printer to our Astiga. So uh, there are, I'm sure, hundreds of uh, YouTube videos on uh, Form Labs, and of course Astiga as well. So uh, you just have to, you know, Google uh, that, get on YouTube, and you'll see those. And then lastly, do do you need my CDT number to send the credit? The answer is eventually yes, but as I mentioned. Uh, we're going to be sending out uh, some information on how we're going to uh, issue the, the CDT credit, and all of that will be coming your way within the next couple of days. So there are no more questions that I can see on the board, so I want to thank you all very much. I hope to see you at a future uh, WITMIX webinar. You can just check WITMIX, the WITMIX website for upcoming educational opportunities. So have a great day, everyone, and, and thanks so much for joining us.